Class over, they take Jean-Pierre out into their forest. Their clothes are made from bark. They serve as raincoats by day and blankets by night. The entire tribe, including the best behaved children that I have ever met, move in uncanny silence for fear of alerting the game. They know the migration trails of animals and the best time of year to find fish, the growing cycle of the palms, bamboo, wild fruits and the roots they rely on. They are always on the move. The rhythm of their lives is that of the jungle. For hundreds of generations, life for the Tulambi has revolved around their eternal quest for sustenance. It gives them no time to create complex art or a written language, to develop science or conceive profound metaphysical philosophies. Nor has their endless and simplest form of consumerism led to overpopulation, environmental destruction or the threat of nuclear extermination. They can at least still drink their rivers. But life is short for the Tulambi. They are stalked by diseases like malaria, long conquered by modern medicine. Yes, we can help them, but at what price? If the Tulambi are brought into the modern world, they will suffer the loss of their dignity and traditions to live out their days far below third world poverty levels. Jean-Pierre has lived this dilemma for 25 years. He believes it is inevitable that these last isolated tribes will be found. He also knows that it is better if they are found by people that care enough to fight on their behalf. It is Sunday. The Tulambi have been Dutia's neighbors for three days now. Jean-Pierre offers them food twice a day. He knows that this is the only way he can keep the tribe near his camp. The food means the tribesmen don't have to hunt and gather for themselves, but the expedition supplies are running low. It is time for the Tulambi and the explorers to go back to their respective worlds. It is clear that the Tulambi are no longer frightened by Dutia. They are clearly no longer wary of the expedition, just bewildered and perhaps a little in awe. But they no longer seem to believe the white men are living dead. And Gio seems most eager to continue to communicate with Jean-Pierre, okay. to show them how they live. Uh -uh. Can I see the bag? What is it? Can you open? Le petit zoo, il se, il se dit ça comme un toit. Ah, il m'a pas dit rien. Ah, si, 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 si. Et tout? Bien sûr. Ah, pour enlever les épines. D'accord. Ok. With Huawei, an ally helping to interpret. Dutil puts this together. It is Angio's story. 
We are separate people. We have no contact with the outside world. The first outsider we met was Huawei from the Uya Uya tribe. We came here for medicine that Huawei told us about. We believe in the shaman, but it doesn't always work. We almost died, all of us. We are not strong enough to walk across the big mountains. I'm a human being. I was alone in my mother's belly, not with others like the pigs. My grandfather told me white men did not exist. Now I know they do. I met them. I will return to my forest and die over there. It is the end of my story. Jean-Pierre will later give the tape to linguists. They will hear a language and songs never before heard by modern man. Huawei's original promise to the Tulambi tribe is kept. Dutia administers a concoction of aspirin, vitamin C, and quinine. It can do wonders, but it tastes awful. Assisting these people was the purpose of this expedition in the first place. Allah tries to explain how and when to take the pills to prevent malaria, the main killer in these highlands. We leave enough quinine and vitamins to last the Tulambi for six months. Hopefully, the Papuan government will continue to supply them after our departure. Seka umbanga ti uya uyi. Okay? Nie kunia, kunia. Dutia and his team spent three days with the Tulambi. They must return to their people, and it's time for the members of the expedition to do the same. After the Tulambi had dressed for their journey, they began to sing a farewell song. They lost their drums to their enemies, so they symbolically used their pipes. In his journal, Jean-Pierre Dutilleux writes, You know, it all happened this way, but I still cannot believe what we saw. I must continue my research and I will return to find out whether I was dreaming or not.
minutes later, the bridge across the ages was swept away. <laughs>